why did G4S cling to the version that it was Tabo Bester's body in that cell, even after it was very clear to everybody else in South Africa that it wasn't? Just answer me that question. Because we were not the primary investigation, uh, investigating authority, and we did not have access to the prime evidence, honorable member. And that's your answer? Yes. Wow. I wish we were in court. Um, so you have investigated and f dismissed uh, three people. Are you honestly sitting here this morning telling us that this escape of Hollywood proportions, and no doubt some smart journalist is going to write a book and make a lot of money, was done with the assistance of three people. Is that what you're suggesting? I'm not suggesting that, Honourable Member. I'm saying that those are the individuals who did not follow policy and procedure. But that's just simply not possible. It had to have been so many more. A simple walkthrough of your facility revealed that it had to be so many more. How, how can you honestly sit there this morning and tell not, not me, not the people in this room, you're talking, I hope you understand, to the South African public who have an absolute direct interest in this matter. They have an interest in not having serial rapists and murderers running around the streets. And your job was to make sure that didn't happen, a job you failed at miserably. Do you honestly want to tell people that you think, or that you're satisfied, or that the ambit of your investigation was satisfied after three people were suspended and fired. Really? That's what we are able to say at this stage, Honourable Member. Good Lord. You'll agree with me that, just tell me, how would, how would uh, this propellant, this, this petrol, let's assume it was petrol, have gotten into the cell? Honourable Member, we, we don't know. You don't know. We, de we detected that and we alerted the police to that. And where would the matches, the lighter, the whatever it is that sets the light come from? I don't know. You don't know. Member. And you've done nothing to find out. Cell 35 has been traversed quite thoroughly by my colleagues. But you'll agree with me that it's a, a massive confluence of coincidences that Bester was moved there on that particular date, to that particular cell. Right in the corner, where unless you're really paying attention, you will not see somebody walking up and down there. Because we looked, we did an experiment. Unless, and we saw the person because we were watching him. If the controller is not paying 100% attention, maybe blowing her nose or whatever, you wouldn't have seen it. Because it's the only cell that's so far away that you can't see. And not to put too fine a point on it, and no pun intended, it's right next to the fire escape. Can you tell me that that's a coincidence? Are you suggesting that that's a coincidence? I have no information, Honourable Member, other than to, to regard that as a coincidence. Yeah. What I'm not ruling out <coughs> is that certain members, together with Mr. Bester, carefully planned this event. I'm not ruling that out, but I have nothing <laughs> tangible to present to you to say that this is anything other than a coincidence. You've been investigating for a year. You've had the benefit of the Jix report, which is most, an excellent one. You've had the benefit of your interaction with D DCS. You've had the benefit of the interaction with the South African police. And you're telling me that a year and a bit later, the best you can say is you don't rule out the possibility that this, this was a, a well-planned, monumentally logistical operation. I mean, I have a German Shepherd puppy that can come to that conclusion. There's the arson, the setting a lot of whoever the poor individual was in that cell. There's the corpse substitution. Who is that person in the cell? Where did they come from? Did they come from inside the prison? Because then your head count wouldn't have matched. Did they come in from the outside? How? Did they walk in? Were they murdered in the prison? Did they come in dead? You can't answer any of these questions. We, we don't know. On, you don't on, know. On a year and a bit later, you don't know. We have provided all information pertaining to the movement of our personnel <coughs> that evening to the SAPs, and it's for them 
to investigate based on our information. You have no responsibilities. I'm not saying we have no responsibilities. I'm well, saying that we have investigated this matter so. to the extent possible. You appear to be saying you have no responsibilities. You've done what you could. Given bits of paper to other people and that's it. Wash your hands. Not at all. Well, that's the impression you create. And I want to tell you it's not good enough. It's impossible to believe that this whole operation could have taken place without uh, the greasing of many palms. Where would that money have come from? Whose palms were greased? Which of your officials are living above their means? You don't know because you don't do lifestyle audits. No, we don't. But you don't think you should? We need to take that recommendation to heart, Honourable Member. Just days prior to this incident, a vehicle made an unauthorised entry into the prison facility, correct? That's correct. So the vehicle came in, it was uh, bringing in a what, a kist, a box, a quasi-coffin. You agree with me? I presume your investigation has at least revealed that. Yes, it was a TV stand cabinet that came in. A TV stand cabinet, okay. And where did that TV stand cabinet go to? It went into the skills development area. Um, and according to the people that <coughs> currently being in, inter investigated, this stand was bring in by uh, the supervisor that um, is currently suspended. Ach, not suspended, being dismissed. And... Um, that that came in for uh, rectification purposes. A large wooden box comes into the prison in contravention of all the protocols for repair and doesn't get repaired. Didn't bother anyone? I cannot answer on that at this stage. As I said, um, I will be able to answer that when the investigation has been finalized. I see. <coughs> Could a corpse have fitted into that uh, TV stand? I think so, yeah. And it wasn't searched. It wasn't inspected. That's one of the reasons why the employee that was working there has been suspended currently. He didn't pro uh, do his, pro his work properly. Yeah, yeah, but it's a year later. A bit sad, that. So your Sally Port has got all these fancy mirrors and lights and cameras and whatever. Nobody, nobody noticed on any of the cameras that the thing had come in and wasn't uh, inspected? Honourable Member, um, once again, uh, the investigation is currently pending, uh, but the people that are working in the CCR room that had to monitor this is also currently being suspended because they did not report it. <coughs> so the list of those whose palms were greased is getting longer. It's not just three people. We're standing now at around 10, is that right? We're currently there, but remember, we're currently still busy with the investigation. And I've got no doubt the numbers it, it will may, increase. It may be that from the seven, uh, some of them uh, can come back to work because you, you suspend um, to ensure that you can conduct, con conduct a proper investigation without interference of people. Oh, this happened a year ago, over a year ago. And now, all of a sudden, these last six weeks, there's this big flurry of investigations. This can't be news to you. G4S could not have lived in blissful ignorance of all these systemic failures until February this year. I just, I, could, I don't believe you. Or is that what you're telling me? That you operated in blissful ignorance, failure after failure after failure, as long as you've handed over your forms to everybody and, and you've washed your hands off this matter, everything's just fine. I cannot agree. Um, we, we run a very good prison. Uh. We've, we've run a very good facility uh, with security um, over the years. Our track record uh, explains for itself. Um, this unfortunate incident um, is a result of non-reporting. And because it was not reported and misused, we're currently <coughs> investigating and taking actions uh, to get um, this right and to sort it out. Thank you. 
So you say you have no record of, of Bester being visited on the 16th? The record that was presented to me in the investigation <coughs> on our um, information, inmate information system doesn't provide a record that he was visited on the 16th. Is it possible that the system is incorrect? I cannot, I cannot guess on that. I see. Well, bearing in mind that the system is being incorrect on so many other things, I suppose it could be. Uh, is it possible to get uh, a visit that's not recorded? A straw, time's Hon ticking. Honorable member, um, for, for the data to be captured on the system, we are heavily relying on human beings. Therefore, there is also a possibility that if that visit happened, we were relying on our employees to capture that data. So if the visit happened and the data is not captured, um, it can't be a system problem. It should be a human being error or intentions not to capture that data. So now, the, assuming the body came in in the box and uh, now transferred to the cell, how would it get transferred to the cell unnoticed? Undetected. Anybody? If the uh, body was moved, it's currently not clear to us how the body was moved, moved, um, and that will form part <coughs> of the criminal investigation by SAPS. Um, as we indicated before, we did a proper investigation on all the policies and procedures that had to be followed. Yeah. Where these were not followed, we've taken action. Um, to ensure that people that's responsible to, to follow these are being liable. See, there's the problem, Mr. Badenfeld. Every time you semi-answer a question, then you tack that bit on at the end about, ah, it's not really your responsibility. Nothing here is your responsibility. Every time there's this little exculpatory phrase about, we've done this, we've done that, we've reported, we've, it's not us. Who, sir? Me, sir? No, sir. Anybody else, sir, but not me, sir. It's a little bit it's wearing a bit thin. You maybe want to not do that. Yeah. Okay, and then how did Bester get out? <coughs> I mean, assuming that you agree with me now that Bester got out, because until a few days ago it was your position that it was him in that cell. So let's assume you agree with me now that Bester got out. How did he get out? With will, all those checks and balances, all that security, how did he get out? I will preempting that's part of the SAP investigation. <laughs> Currently, to say how we got out, um, I don't think that's my purpose now. The, the SAP will, who's doing the criminal investigation, and I know you said I keep on saying and passing the buck. Unfortunately, that's how it operates. The SAP are conducting the criminal investigation, and we do a due diligence invest investigation into the operations. You in don't the think that is part of your responsibility to determine how a murderer and a serial rapist walked out of your prison? That's somebody else's responsibility. Get real. 